Our mortars and machine guns are turned in. We don't have. Oh uh, my gosh, it wasn't long. So here come these semis, four foot size and no top on them. They loaded us up. And it was evening then. Turned the lights on, started. And I know you turned the lights on in the combat area at night. There's something going on. And that's where we went. They dumped us out in the field. Nobody even knew what country we were in. We had guys went in and didn't have a weapon. Didn't have a helmet. <coughs> and whatever K rations you managed to scrounge, there was some alongside the road that people picked up and some ammunition some officer found and, and just took what they could get. And I went in with three K rations, that's for one day, and that's what I had for ten days because the weather socked in, planes couldn't fly, and we were surrounded. And here's all these people coming back toward us, all distraught and, and, and crying and carrying on. And some of them said, "This, what are you, what are you doing? We're going up to fight." And so they're killing everybody. They'll kill you. And there's a jeep came back, had a major and another officer in it. And one of our guys stopped him. Uh, one of our officers and said, "We're taking the jeep." And the guy said, "No, that belongs to us." He put his Tommy gun up and said, that's ours, now get out. That's, that's how we did things. But the weather, it was drizzly rain for three days. We were already wet. And then the cold came. We got down around 15 below zero. And you're out there in nothing but a jumpsuit. We had a raincoat. And that was it. If you didn't get a foxhole dug in those first three or four days, you couldn't, because the ground was so damn solid, you couldn't dig in it. And that's the way we lived. Now you see in the books, they talked about having turkey and all that for Christmas. Well, I found out how that happened. Part of the line was in, in villages. And yes, the civilians there did give that stuff to them. But where we were, there was no civilians, no buildings, nothing. We were out in the open the whole damn time. We didn't have anything. And my Christmas dinner was snow and lemon pie. And all the general officers up in Bastogne, some guy up there rummaged through a bombed out building and found some sardines canned sardines and crackers, and that's what the generals ate for Christmas. It wasn't much better than us. When the, when the snow had the stuff to fall off from the, from the guns? Well, you had cordite. Oh, the snow was, tasted like cordite because all the shells fired, and it was all gray on top, and that's what we ate. <laughs> and that's what you... Water was another thing. We didn't find any water for several days, and we found a on patrol found a little lake about a mile away that the Germans were using and that's what you do. A couple of guys steal a jerry can off of one of the tank or a truck and it either had diesel or gasoline in it. Go over there and fill it, come back, fill your canteens. You had to drink it right away or freeze. And then they gave us, I don't know where they got them, they got this stew. It's a, it's the sea ration, and it's not very good. We put a can under next to our belly for a day or so and let it thaw a little, and you open up and it's mush ice. And you take two or three bites and your stomach just wasn't able to take any. Then the Germans were butchering some pigs at Riconia, which was about 200 yards from us. And a little one, about 35 pounds, got away and came up toward our line. And then turned around and started back. And the uh, sergeant went out and picked it up and shot it and laid it down in the snow and cut it up. And that's what the guys ate. I didn't eat any of it because I don't like all the And at that time, almost every pig in the world probably had trichinosis. But we're mad enough about getting something like that. Nobody got sick. Was. And you know, people say, how in the hell could you live like this? Because we had to. And we're so cold and had so little fuel, 
so they stop shivering. That means you're going into hypothermia. Stop shivering, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. I didn't say anything to the guys. I knew what was happening. The medics knew what was happening. But nobody said anything, because what could you do about it? Now, they said that Pat had to rescue us, and that's not true. Pat was engaged, the whole army, in heavy combat. And the, what you see, the story is that he was ordered to turn around and come to us, and that isn't true either. He was not ordered. He had to argue with them to stop combat where he was, and he turned it 90 degrees and came about 150 miles to break through. And what that did was allow us to bring in supplies and take out dead and wounded because the Germans ca captured a medical company the first day. So all the medical supplies they had was what the regiment had and what the guys had. We carried a nice little pack on our, most guys on their helmet because we were behind the line so we had more than what the regular infantry had. They did operations without incentive because they ran out of it right away. They ran out of morphine right away. And they just held guys down, four guys hold a guy down. That's the way they operated. The living conditions, that's what was bad. Now you're on defense. It's true that you get shelled and bombed all the time, but you're not in active shooting most of the time. But you do get artillery all day and you get bombing all night. And, but you get used to that. But the cold you never get used to. It's just terrible. Hmm.